Dual Review is brought to you by NexusDigitalComics.com. On today's Dual Review, it's Final Fantasy Unlimited. I'm RJ. And I'm Nick. Let's get to it. Hey guys, welcome to Thursday the 22nd of November. We are doing Final Fantasy Unlimited, the anime. That's right. Uh, Mahiro Maeda, I believe that's how you pronounce it, is uh, the director. He also did Gunkutsua, that we just reviewed not too long ago. Monte Cristo, Canon Monte Cristo uh, anime. Anyway, uh, it's a Gonzo film. Uh, 2001. There are 25 episodes of it. Um, this was actually recommended to us, or they asked if we would review it uh, by a, a, a viewer. And, um, yeah, we both had not watched it, so let's, let's say that. Uh, and we both did, and we had kind of different reaction to it. Uh, I always say that I wish that there was a Final Fantasy anime that was kind of more true to the video game. Because, yes, we have, you know, we have a lot of characters from video games, from, like, Advent Children and stuff. Right. But they don't do anything explicitly Final Fantasy to me, as far as, like, the, the whole tropes of the video game, like... The uh, summoning and all that stuff, and the and the and the repetitive moves that we have all the time. And lo and behold, I just didn't know about this anime because it's all in there. Now we have varying degrees of thinking that it's like the video game, but I thought it was very much in tune with the video game, and I actually enjoyed this. I mean, it's a little bit simple at times. Uh, we follow two children uh, named I and you. There just needs to be an O. <laughs> yeah, huh. I owe you. Well, I, I was thinking it was I and you. So it always yeah. confused me, like, hey, you, can you do this? Yeah, and it's so like, I is a little girl, and you is a little boy. And they are grading at times. I think that 2001 yeah. was early enough that there aren't a whole lot of child actors or act, uh, uh, voice actors that do ch children, and so they had to pick people that weren't necessarily the best versed at voice acting. They do an okay job. There's nothing that really takes me out, but it's kind of one of those things like, Oh my goodness, there's something coming. You know, it's just, it's stilted. Uh, right. It's just not quite flow very you know, as well as it should. Um, but having said that, we follow these two kids. Um, they are looking for their parents uh, in Wonderland. And Wonderland, I guess this kind of takes me out of the Final Fantasy verse. Wonderland is kind of this other dimension, let's say, that all these weird things happen. And long story short, without spoiling too much... Uh, Wonderland, the the Earl of Wonderland, is trying to bring about the the reformation of Omega, which would then leak into the real world, like our world kind right. of thing, and yada yada yada. So they they're following their parents into the Wonderland because the one they've been there to study their physics before. I'm not going to spoil exactly what connection they all have. Right, the parents went in to study Wonderland, and the right. kids so, went in after, after the parents right. didn't come they back. They disappeared, and so the kids are going in. And there's this train um, that shows up and kind of ushers them, but you can easily miss the train, and if you miss the train, it's no guarantee it's going to come back or when it's going to come back. Uh, early on, they find a chocobo uh, who has a medallion that actually kind of has like a train schedule. Well, it just basically alerts you when the train is there, and the chocobo seems to know when where the train is going to be, or right. at least as it's you know. Chobi the chocobo. Yeah, shows up. It knows where to go to right. quickly get on it before it departs, and they do miss a train once, but that kind of works to their favor because they find some other characters. Um, the other two characters that you follow besides the children are uh, Lisa Pacifist, which is a horrible name. But anyway, um, she is she's basically the first one. She's, she's kind of protecting the kids. And we know that there's something other to go on, but she keeps avoiding the question. The kids ask her, you know, like, why were you here? What are you doing? Are you looking for your boyfriend? And there's all that blah, bit blah. about the smiling. And so we're not totally sure about her story, but I think you can pretty much surmise right. what's going on. Uh, and then there's another one, uh, Koza, right? Yeah. Kaze. 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 Kaze? Yeah, Kaze. Kaze. Uh, and he is the mysterious. He's very Vincenty in some ways. Yeah, Vincent from Final Fantasy VII. Yeah, and um, he's got this thing on his arm. I forget what it's called, but 
Uh, every once in a while, it will activate when he's in danger. It sometimes has moved. It, yeah, that's what he says, and sometimes it doesn't. And this is where some of the Final Fantasy comes in for me, is because when he is in danger and his, his thing does activate, he has this little spiel that he says every time. It's almost exactly the same, except for the very end. The soil triad and to, yeah, he to use on you. He chooses different bullets of colors, which are his soil, and right. they well, each have different names contained and within the what Contained within the bullets ha- is the soil, and the soil is important because... Uh, the soil in Wonderland has these ener- energy properties, and each one's kind of different. So each little colored vial is a different type of soil that he uses to summon. Sorry, go ahead. Right, and so, he, yeah, he summons, but he summons uh, things a lot of times that are familiar if right. you play the games, like right. uh, Ifrit well, and... Yeah, Ixion and Shiva. They all look different than they should, probably. But they always but... do in every iteration of Final Fantasy. Yeah, so anyway, I, I do enjoy that part, even though it is repetitive, but it is, you know, kind of very traditional anime as right. well, because they reuse the same footage a lot to save time, you know, kind of thing. And um, So he's an okay, interesting character, but he's a little bit of a bastard, because he just kind of disappears all the time, and, right. and the he only, has his own agenda. The only time he really does fight is when his little thingy moves, you know, so when things spins, and, right. and, and he Although can... Although he does have a gun. Yeah, so he, he does, does use that every now and then. Well. Mostly in the beginning. But um, he, really, he really doesn't care about anyone other than what he's going going to do and you're really trying to figure out what he's what his goals are what why he doesn't help. right i mean they ask him to help they ask him to protect and he just kind of doesn't want it's convenient or whatever but right. he does do it so yeah. so he is helpful um i was going to bring up uh the other guy oh the, the white cloud yeah mckenchie he's kind of his counterpart mckenchie he's for the earl now before i get any further the earl is this little kid uh basically the emperor you know kind of thing of this realm I mean, he's the Earl, but nothing else is really above him that we know of. We, right. we don't really get that story. So anyway, he's in control. He's a spoiled little brat who eats a lot, and he eats disgusting things. He eats people like souls and whatever. He just eats weird things, and he has a couple of different servants. One is the Mushroom General, which I'm not going to remember the names. Fungos. Uh, one is the the um, the masquerade, you know, kind of jester-looking guy, but he's like a Oscar, crazy scientist. Oscar. I think his name I think is it's Oscar. Oscar or something. Uh, I don't know. Oscar. Anyway, and then there's the Plant Lady. Irva. So these are all, again... And I forgot the fish guy, whose name I can't remember. Oh, right, who shows up a little bit. And so these are all, to me, reminiscent of Final Fantasy. You get these really bizarre um, creatures that pop up that are a culmination, you know, like half human, half fungus, or right. or lightning and fish and plant, or, you know, whatever. It's just kind of a lot of fun that There's way. a lot of plants in this. This is, yeah, this, yeah. the world is essentially it's, plant life. That's the way it is in, in, in Final Fantasy, mostly. I mean, there's a lot of plant, I mean, that's the organic nature of it. Yeah, you know, yeah, there's there's a lot of plant enemies. But there's like, very few purely mechanical, both in the anime and the games that I can remember. I mean, because they all have some kind of weird humanoid, fleshy bit, you know what for, I mean? For the enemies. Yeah, okay. for the most part. But anyway, so I could, you know, definitely get a kind of flavor. And the only thing that it doesn't satiate for me is it's not a direct story that we're familiar with from the game. It doesn't follow Cloud and his camp, although, you know, obviously Advent Children does that a little bit, right. but they don't have the summoning and stuff. So I'd like to see one that has both. You know, we follow Vincent off on his his journey or something, or we follow Pain, or, you know, even some of the lesser characters, uh, Riku or something would be awesome. I don't know. I just want to see these other worlds. Um, what's the name of the world, the beach world that's in uh, 10? Oh, Waka. yeah. I, don't, I forget the name I don't of it, but, the beach but world. it's a very um, distinct, you know, a distinct the, cultural I don't, I don't represent, representation yeah. that I, I enjoy, and so I wish that they'd follow something like that. It'd oh. basically take uh, the game and say, hey, there's some story here that we haven't explored. Let's explore it in anime. That would be awesome. But um, but this one does remind me very much of, of Final Fantasy. Now, I know that you don't feel quite the same. Right. The, the issue that I have is they, they definitely knew Final Fantasy. You know, they, they had the summoning. They had a character named Sid, which every single Final Fantasy had, <laughs> you know. And they had a lot of cool throw-ins to the universe, uh, especially with what they summoned. Well, I thought, like, the train was very, you know what I mean? But the problem that I have is, is it feels like they took these ideas of what what's in Final Fantasy and just threw it into a story and it's called it Final Fantasy. It doesn't really feel to me like it is a Final Fantasy anime. And I say that because every Final Fantasy anime, there's always a big political uh, um, backdrop to the story. Right. And this one does kind of have that with the Earl and whatnot. But also, the world that, that, that it's happening to is the world that they all live in, to, live in. So it's this already established world, as opposed to 
our world, and then these kids just kind of stumble into Wonderland through the giant pillar of blackness or whatever. But they have it is. do they do have very different worlds within that world within Wonderland, different right. areas. Uh, and I wanted to say with Wonderland, what it, what essentially is is when one planet is destroyed, parts of that planet get turned like get brought into kind of like what happened in Kingdom Hearts, you know, where where um, the the reality kind of shift has happened and and people are being thrown into different worlds and worlds are colliding or universes I should say are colliding so that's kind of what Wonderland is yeah, it's always ever changing a right. little bit but all of that really doesn't feel like a Final Fantasy game to me you know each character in Final Fantasy in, in the games they all they are all unique with each unique weapons and and abilities and attitudes in this anime it's just kind of you have the two kids who don't fight almost ever, you know, but they do have some abilities. You know, the boy has the, the Chobi, who I, I like when, when Chobi goes drop kicking anything. Yeah. It's always fun. Um, and the girl has that little, was it Pashi Pocket? Yeah, the, uh, Pashi the Pocket. Little, the little purse thing that eats things and spews things up when she needs it. Um, so they do have that, but they never actually fight, so they're kind of, like, useless. They're just... But, you know, they're, we they're, do have members like Lisa and, like, Lou and, like, um, yeah, uh... Kaze, right, and, right, right. You know, so we do have kind of a team, but yes, I, I understand that they don't really facilitate the Final Fantasy thing, and also the the backdrop is bland compared yes. to the Final Fantasy games. I mean, we don't have like crystalline palaces of whatever, you know, that sort of thing. Right. So I, I would have loved to see that, but again, it's it's an anime, so that might cost a lot. Actually. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure, and I'm sure that a lot of my um, my problems with the anime is because it would cost a lot to do, you know, because they weren't making a video game, they were making a series of anime, right. and that money has to be divvied up to, you know, animators per cell and whatnot, and, you know, all that other fun stuff. So, uh, I, it just, it's just, I wish that it had more of a, a Final Fantasy feel, you know? I as definitely agree with that. throwing things into it. But that, I still that, enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah it, well, it is enjoyable. If I knew nothing about Final Fantasy and I just listened to it for the story, the first thing I would say is, wow, there's a lot of plant people, and what's the deal <laughs> with all the plants? But the second thing is, this is a pretty decent anime, you know, on its own. It's just, to have Final Fantasy before that, you expect so much more. Nick watched it before I did, and his comments were mostly like, I don't know how to feel about this. Because yes. he, you know, he saw some cool things, but then, he, you know, the ridiculous things that Kaze says and all that stuff, which oh, is kind of, you know, gets me, the, painful. The soil triad, to use all you, has been it. determined. I didn't mind it that, <laughs> that he, much, because it is shades of the game, where you kind of have these over-the-top, bizarre, you know, things that happen every time right. that something is summoned. And I did love it, like, hey, it's Shiva, you know, kind of thing, even though it didn't look like Shiva to me. Anyway. Yeah, uh, that, that's, that's another big problem that I have. Well, first of all, Nearly every, I think every single episode has a summoning of some kind, especially in the yeah. earlier episodes. Um, so he's always summoning. Um, but the the summons, the they just they're, they're also kind of bland because this was done in what two thousand one, right? Yeah. Um, so the three D wasn't quite there, especially for an anime. So you yeah, know, they're not as grand as they should have been. Yeah. There's no weird like, like you know, written whatever words and stuff and like pentagram, you know, whatever. Right, and that, and that's another thing. Uh, the only, the only, the only uh, summoning sequence that you see is him loading up his gun to fire. You know his his. Arm Which gun. I do think is cool. I love it when the smoke comes yeah, out and, and then, then it swirls. swirls. Yeah, I like yeah. that too. Um, so so that you have that as opposed to when you know what happens when the character like in the in the Final Fantasy games if you summon Ifrit you're going to see this big volcano thing erupt and then Ifrit's going to come out and he's right. going to lift up part of the That's land true, and then yeah. throw it down and this you just have they him shoot here yeah they, they just, just appear after the three shots go so. yeah and I, I did miss that for sure i wish it was a little more grandiose but yeah. still i still kind of got the flavor but anyway um yeah so if it sounds interesting to you, check it out. Uh, again, it's not very long. You can find most of it on YouTube or other places. Right. Uh, it's not on Netflix as, as you know, for now. As far as we know, yeah. Yeah, so, um, yeah, go check it out. Thanks for the recommend. Um, any more recommendations, shoot, shoot them our way. Yeah, please. So that's it, guys. Uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, follow our great playlists. Uh, Game Lab's been a lot of fun. Moonflower and Fover are great. Thank you, thank you. And please leave comments. We love comments. And you can help support us uh, by buying our wares at spiderwolf.com. That's right. T-shirts, car games, art prints, and much, much more. See you guys. Yes. Yeah. Yay. Yay. Next time on Dual Review, it's Brave. Oh, boy. Oh, look at my hair. What do you mean? Ooh, look at my hair. Oh no, it's sticking up. It looked really dorky. <laughs> Dude, I should totally like gel it down and then do the alfalfa up.
Gel. Gel it down. Gel it. I have to go to a wedding in February, so I'm letting my hair grow out so that I can figure out what the hell I'm gonna do with it for the, for the actual wedding. I have to wear a freaking tuxedo. I'm hoping it's a bow tie because I've never worn a bow tie before. <laughs> you know, so the tuxedo has a bow tie. I honestly don't think anybody looks good in a bow tie. James Bond? No. Dude, what? I don't think anybody looks good in a bow tie. You think James Bond looks good? Yeah, well, it depends on which one. Sean Connery is awesome. Um, what's the new guy's name? He looks pretty good in a bow tie. I'm not sure how I feel about that. What? Didn't, didn't, didn't Doctor Who? Well, one of them wore a bow tie, I'm sure. So? Just saying, bow ties are prevalent. <laughs> They're awesome. Uh, I just want to wear one. I've I guess never, you have to be a Brit then. I've never worn. I'm not a Brit. That's what I'm saying. You have to be a Brit to to, to like and wear bow ties. What uh, American wears bow ties? looks not like. You know, like a clown. <laughs> That's true. How many? How or, many? Like Orville Redenbacher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he does wear a bow tie. You're right. And uh, and wait to uh, know your butter guy, your popcorn is guy. KFC, is KFC? Does he wear a bow tie? No, I, I think, think he wears a polo. Bow tie, yeah. yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Good job. Yay! Yay! Excellent. Ow. Kind of hurt.